Hello, my name is Ibrahim Halmi, and today I'll be going over a collision resolution technique for hash tables known as coalesced hashing. Coalesced hashing is a hybrid of two types of hashing collision resolution techniques. The first is separate chaining, and the second is open addressing. First, let's discuss separate chaining. With separate chaining, not all the data is stored in the hash table array. In fact, the data is all stored in linked lists or sometimes other data structures. And the indices of the arrays are all pointing to either ahead of one of the linked lists or to null. And if a collision occurs and two elements are hashed into the same index, then the latter addition is inserted into the linked list. Here's an example of separate chaining applied to a hash table where the keys are phone numbers. The hash function for this hash table takes the integers of the phone numbers separated by the dash and adds them up to get the index at which they will be stored. As is indicated by the red arrow, there are two phone numbers here that collide as they will have the exact same index as a result of their hashing. When this collision occurs, you could see that in that exact parameter, the numbers are added to a linked list, creating a chain that can be followed when attempting to look up or search for a phone number that has the exact same hashed value. Unlike separate chaining, open addressing techniques aim to keep all the data stored in the hash table itself, with each bucket containing an element or a null value. And this technique handles collisions using some form of probing sequence that is used to determine the location at which the collided item will be inserted. With coalesced hashing, it is similar to separate chaining in that the data is all stored in the hash table itself, and collisions can be tracked using some form of probing. With coalesced hashing, that probing means going to the largest index and probing backwards to try and find the next open index. It is similar to open addressing in that each item is not always stored in the index that the hash function has assigned it to. And when using coalesced hashing, each bucket also has a pointer that points to the next element stored in the hash table that has collided with it previously. It's either that or it points to null, meaning there were no collisions at this index. Let's take a look at an example of this. At the top, we can see a hash function h that takes in an element as an input and hashes it to some index. At the top, we can see that a is hashed to index 0, b is hashed to index 2, c is hashed to index 4, d to index 0, e to index 0, f to index 2, and g to index 5. When we attempt to insert a into the hash table, we successfully managed to insert it at index 0. When we insert b into the hash table, we successfully managed to add it at index 2. When we try to insert c, we successfully managed to insert it at index 4. However, when we attempt to insert index d, we come across a collision. Since d has collided with a, and the index of 0 has no pointer currently pointing to any other index, meaning there hasn't been a previous collision, we go to the largest index of the hash table and we begin to probe for an empty slot. Here we notice that the largest index is 7 and it is an empty space. So we place D in index 7 and we update the pointer at index 0 to point to index 7, letting us know that the item that is collided at index 0 is now stored at index 7. When we attempt to insert E, we find that it once again collides at index 0 with A we check to see if there are any pointers and we see a pointer to index 7. We go to 7 and we find that there is no pointer to the next item in the chain of collisions, meaning that there are no more collisions at this point. So starting at 7, we now look at the biggest index that we can place E. We find that to be index 6. And now we have index 7 point to index 6 as the next location in the collision chain and we insert E there. Next, we attempt to insert f. Once f is hashed, we find that the index it's hashed to is index 2. And when we attempt to insert it, there's a collision. However, at index 2, we find that there are no pointers. So, we head to the bottom of the hash table, at the largest index, and probe backwards to see if we can find the next available largest index to insert f. As we probe backwards from 7, we find that the next available largest index is 5. This is where we place f. Now we place a pointer at 
the second index to index 5, letting us know that f which collided with b at this index can now be found at index 5. Finally, we attempt to insert g. g is hashed to index 5. Once we look at index 5, we find that there is a collision. However, there is also no pointer at index 5. So once again, we go to the largest index and we begin to probe backwards. Once we do that, we find that the next available largest index is index 3. We insert g here, and at index 5, we insert a pointer to index 3. Finally, we've inserted all the elements into our hash table, and we used coalesced hashing to resolve any of the collisions that came along the way. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.